There's so many things I want to say, but I can't say them in the first minute of this video. Editing Camille here. Um, this video is going to be largely talking about some heavy topics like assault. I don't know if it's late enough in the video for me to use certain words. Um, so I'll just say I do talk a lot about SA and anything in regards to that sort of topic will be discussed in this video. So if that's not something that you want to watch or listen to, that is totally fine. Just giving that warning before we dive into it. This is a video I've been wanting to make, but not quite yet. There are other videos I'm working on at the moment, but I just keep thinking about this and it is just, it makes me so angry that I'm like, okay, maybe I just need to get this off my chesticles and then I can move on with my life because I am so sick of webtoon. I'm, I'm so sick of webtoons. And I want to use a very specific comic that I came across as an example of why I'm just, um, I'm sick of it here. I've been reading web comics here and there. I go through phases where I'm like, love it. And other phases where I kind of forget it exists. So I've been a long time like webtoon reader and subscriber. And I have just noticed a decline in quality, if you will. And I'm sure that there are other like more well thought out videos about this, about the decline in said quality. I feel like Webtoon has just kind of become, uh, for lack of a better word, a cesspool of anything. You can put anything as long as you're not like showing any explicit graphic scenes in a web comic you go ahead and put it it doesn't matter if the story is absolutely shitty it doesn't matter if it's ass go ahead go for it the only thing that webtoon seems to really like be prudish about is like showing explicit nudity or sex scenes because there are like comics on there where you can pay for a patreon version or what have you and that's the thing i don't really care about that that's not where my gripe is. I think my issue lies with Webtoon is that there doesn't really seem to be much quality control. And you might be thinking like, well, Camille, it, what does it matter? You know, this is just like any other sort of kiss manga type website you may come across. But it's not, though. It's it's not. And it it kind of presents itself as a better quality like top tier type of web comic app compared to other ones that you may see kiss manga is the first one that came to mind but you know what i mean like that's a website it, there, it, there is a difference i think one of my beefs with webtoon is that it presents itself as like a top tier type of hub for these web comics you know like you have big publicly known stories like Laura Olympus, for example. That is a very publicly widely known comic. Webtoon presents itself as something that is more seen by the public eye. This isn't like a fanfic.net. This isn't like an AO3 type of deal. You have ads on there like and not like questionable meet singles in your area type of ads. Like you have main ads on there. Like they are pushing this out. This is a huge platform, a huge app that is widely used. So one would think that they have some sort of better system. Before I just keep yapping and yapping, this is what really like made me just want to... I came across... A web comic, I mean, I have to pull it up. I came across a web comic that I was like, oh, this is basically a ripoff of the Remarried Empress, which is arguably like one of the most well known comics on Webtoon. Like, that thing's pulling in numbers. 
So I came across this web comment called Who Stole the Empress? And it really stuck out to me because I was like, damn, that main character looks really similar to what's her face in the remarried empress which i've read a good chunk of and then it got kind of boring and i was like i don't think i care enough about these characters to keep pushing through so i was a little intrigued and i did let my curiosity get the better of me and i was like okay i want to see how similar this actually is to the remarried empress that all to say i don't think the remarried empress is it is not the most original thing, you know, like it's not the first one to do what it did. I just think it happens to be the most popular. That's why I don't, I don't have like huge beef with that in particular, in this vacuum of what I'm talking about today. So I started reading it and the, I, the writing's not great to begin with. Um, the story is very, the story's very basic in terms of, like, you have a, a very stereotypical empire. Of course, you have to have an evil emperor with no redeeming qualities. Um, and he's married to an empress that the people love, but she's kind of standoffish. Does this sound similar to the remarried empress? Because it should. She's very standoffish, but, but the people still love her. And she's just beautiful, but, you know, people just, like don't get very close to her and, and the emperor hates her uh she didn't do anything wrong of course she has to be like basically perfect in every way but the emperor still hates her and wants nothing to do with her so he conspires with his mistress to get rid of her again if this sounds similar to the remarried empress this is a, just a really crappier version of that web comic and so he conspires with his mistress to not just out her but to kill her. Like, he tortures her, imprisons her, um, and then, I, I can't remember, it's been a while since I read it, because I, <laughs> it's been a while, so, I can't remember if she escapes, I think she escapes, and she, like, goes out into the mountains, um, a girl's been through it at this point, and so she's just kind of like, I can't do it anymore, I'm cold, I'm freezing, I am, uh, I have been through so much physically, I'm just gonna give up the ghost, and then she gets rescued by a, a, an old enemy, so someone from another country comes and sees her, and he's like, I recognize you, you're coming home with me, but does it in such a creepy-ass way, where he's like, Oh, I hate this. I hate this so much. He does it in such a creepy way where he's like, your life belongs to me now. <laughs> Put a pin in that because that's a whole other thing that I just need to rant about. So he takes her to his country and basically like won't let her die. Um, and we'll get into that more. This is really where I'm like, what? He takes her to his country and... It just becomes, like, really boring political intrigue at that point. Like, honestly, I, I'm i not caught up. It's There's not very many chapters out. Um, it's, it's not very good. The writing is quite ass-like. And it's just... No, it's just... Ugh. Here's my very long-winded gripes with Webtoon in general. This The series itself is marked as mature. It doesn't say what things are in it that make it that rating. Um, and I feel like Webtoon generally very vague in what their rating system is. Like, unless the artist specifically says, and sometimes they do, like Laura Olympus, which I am making a video on, by the way. That's why I keep bringing it up because it's, in my melon, but Laura Olympus, like Rachel Smith, in certain chapters will specify, hey, this chapter contains X, Y, and Z. Then you can decide whether or not you want to read it or skip to the next chapter, right? Webtoon in general is quite vague with their rating, so they do kind of leave it up to the artist to put those disclaimers or those content warnings 
And you're not always going to find those content warnings on those comics. If the artist doesn't want to do it, then you just kind of go into something blind. So that was the case with this. I was like, okay, yeah, it's rated mature. They, they probably get their hanky-panky on. Um, that's to be expected, but given that it's Webtoon, it's not going to show anything explicit. Not that I am a, opposed to that. Like, I'm no prude by any means. <sighs> this webcomic is rated mature for sexual content, but that sexual content is largely sexual assault with no content warning that that's what it is. And I have two issues with this. One being that there is a rating, a mature rating one can have for sexual content that is like kinky, consensual, whatever. Like if you know what you're getting into and you have that warning and you know what kind of what to expect, like that's the point of having specifications on what triggers or content warnings might be, right? So that's one thing. There's also sexual content that could be in a story that is not consensual. Those are two very different things. And so to lump them together and just be like, yeah, this is rated mature for sexual content. But if you're not gonna specify what type of sexual content it is, how are readers going to know unless they actually read your stupid story? That's where my issue is. I recently watched a really good video by Reads with Rachel um, where she was talking about a book. I might butcher it, which it's called, the book is Butcher and Black Word, I'm pretty sure. So I did not mean, that was not intended. But the, there are like, content warnings at the beginning of the book but it's largely like try the author's trying to make jokes out of the content warnings like with them and i'm like that's that's not the point that is not the point of of what these are for what are we doing it's not and she had a really good analogy of the reason we ha have like trigger and content warnings and things is similar to like people needing allergy warnings on things, right? Because some things are going to impact people differently. So for example, a really gory things, explicit gore is not going to impact person A, but if you have, Rachel used this example of like a miscarriage. If you're showing a miscarriage on, on screen or on page, that can impact person A differently than something like gore, right? Like people have different allergies and they have different levels of like tolerance to or intolerance to those allergies. Someone who's allergic to peanuts, it could be a mild, uh, a mild allergy or it could be something like life-threatening, right? That is the purpose of why we have content warnings. And this whole video is not me to be like, you know what? No, I don't care. I, it, I don't care if I'm being caring about this. I'm really just so sick and tired of seeing things on a very public platforms without the proper disclaimers on them to completely blindside people who want to enjoy something like it's stupid what we're in 2024 get it together so that's that's where my issue lies with this comic in specific like this is a good example of why i have an issue with webtoon in general like you're coming across things on say ao3 or fanfic like they have like a list of tags those are there to one give you an idea of like what to expect in this and what maybe you want to avoid you know it's like it's really sad that a website like fanfic or ao3 or even wattpad like they're doing a better job at letting people know like hey here's a summary of all the batshit crazy things that are going to be in this you're free to read it or not oh you don't want to read about anal fisting you don't have to but you at least know that anal fisting is gonna be in this story right it's insane that 
those platforms have a better system in place than something like web webtoon like you think they would have at this point something better to let people know that is like one of my biggest gripes with this whole thing is the complete vagueness in the type of warning like oh well it's it's rated mature that could mean a number of things. I did not go into this expecting to read about sexual assault, about this main character. So that brings me to point number two being this comic, if I ever see this author, honestly, it is on site. Like this, I think speaks to a larger issue with stories like this really treating things like sexual assault and conflating them to be like the same as any other sexual encounter i hope that makes sense without getting like too into the details on this story but they treat the sexual assault in this story as if it is just a normal encounter and it's so like I don't even want to say normalized I don't know how to describe it with like it sounds so dumb and insane basically it first happens when the guy uh let's name him Bob I don't remember what his name is and I don't care the guy that rescues her Bob and the main character, I also don't care to remember her name. Let's name her Debbie. Um, wh when Bob rescues Debbie, Bob has this magical ability um, that he can, like, heal people through being physical with them. Which, to me, just comes off as, hey, it's okay if he does heinous things to her because he's saving her he's just healing her no that is so stupid that's so dumb um so after he rescues debbie he doesn't explain his powers um and it kind of alludes to the fact that like oh well he has to keep his power secret but continues to force himself onto this woman under the guise of, well, I'm healing her. It's okay that I'm assaulting her because I'm, I'm healing her. It's for her own good. That's literally what it comes off as. is like, well, it's for her own good, so it's, it's fine. And it's so, like, laissez-faire. And it's supposed to be a romance, right? Like, we're supposed to be rooting for this guy. But he is, like, your very stereotypical, like... I hate male characters like this. He's your stereotypical, like... You're, you're mine, and I, and I get to do whatever I want. But, but he's hot, and he's sexy, so of course he can get away with what if, with atrocious things because he's hot, right? Um, I'm so sick of male characters written like that. It would be one thing if the story took the uh, as like, hey, how can we explore this in an intellectual way? And, and use that on, like, a commentary about consent. Of course, it's not going to do this because the story is so superficial and, like, surface level that it is just written plain Jane as it comes. And you're supposed to read that. As a reader, you're supposed to see that and think, oh, my gosh, wow, he must really care about her, really love her to be doing th these things. Because then, like, ten chapters later, they 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 have sex again and it's supposed to be like oh such a romantic thing and it's like did we forget about chapter five hello and if you look in the comments on this web comic like so many of them were like just so taken aback like where did this come from huh like that it's insane how many of the comments were like i think i need to not read this anymore because i was not expecting that and the main character herself after he rescues her um and all that goes down as they're traveling to his country 
she like thinks to herself like i can't i can't believe that i let him have his way with me for x amount of days i'm like anything anything that this man has done that is wrong like he is not he's not respecting boundaries at all because again it's for her own good she internalizes that as like she's the issue and then after he takes her to said country he like takes her to their royal baths or whatever and like basically like forces her to to bathe and again like she's going through so much mental anguish physical anguish like her whole life has been stripped from her and rather than having any sort of good internal like thought process on that like exploring those themes that's not what this story is about the bar is quite literally in hell um no it, that doesn't happen she's going through all of this and she tries to take her own own life and he gets mad at her and rather ugh, i hate this man i hate this man so much i've not read a story that makes me just want to in a hot minute he gets mad at her and basically like forbids her from doing that again but also like forces himself on her and kisses her he doesn't do what he did in previous chapters but he does like forcibly kiss her again to heal her and i don't know why it's later on that she starts to realize like oh i think his kisses are healing me and i'm like what the f i'm sorry did the whole the whole thing back there when you were like oh uh, he had his way with me for days but you you got you were healed because of that hello did you not put two and two together like how convenient that you're now realizing that it's so like shitty shitty writing shitty but he does that and she starts to clue in i'm like oh i think he's healing me with his with his forced affection on me and she then at this point is finally like hey don't kiss me without my consent again uh, like that is the first time that that has come up in conversation like that is the first time that consent consent has entered the chat and this guy's like you're not allowed to do that you belong to me like he basically lays claim on her and again we're supposed to think that that is hot and sexy and so attractive i know that that uh, that floats some people's boats frankly it makes me want to burn the fleet down it's not until like chapter i don't know 10 to 12 or so after he is already like actually assaulted her in very heinous ways <laughs> that consent is even brought up and then you see like kind of a shift in comments i don't know if one can delete comments on webtoon but i was looking through them to see like are people are okay with this because there's like a shift in people being like wow consent has entered the chat oh wow you know they decided like hey don't kiss me without my consent but what about the rest of her <laughs> i'm like what please go to therapy oh my god please go to therapy it's just like this just there's just this weird lack of self-awareness of did you actually read the beginning of the story to now be like wow this is really romantic wow i can't believe he's like respecting her boundaries and stuff okay <laughs> okay and I know that there are things that can be said about people enjoying things like dubcon or consensual, non-consent, yada, yada, yada. Those are things that should come with some sort of forewarning because not everyone is into that shit. And on a lot of other platforms that you will see, you will have a tag or warning about that sort of thing. But I think the bigger issue lies in the fact that this webcomic 
is written it's written in a way that it's like i don't think the author has any self-awareness and i think the author thinks that this is hunky dory like the author is not writing this as like this is specifically dub con right i think the author wrote this as this is a normal romance you, you are you smelling what i'm stepping in like it would be one thing if the author is like, I'm going to include these very specific like kinks, et cetera, et cetera, into this story. So when people read it, they know what they're getting themselves into. And instead, I think the author wrote it as like, this is just a straightforward romance and you're supposed to root for these. Like, this is not vanilla. I think this is a completely warped view of what romance should look like. I would have way less grief and beef with this story if it was straightforward about like, hey, this has a dub con kink in it. This has like a consensual non-consent, anything like that, I would have less beef. But the fact that it's like, I 100% believe that the author is, um, because it's not specified anywhere, I 100% believe that the author wrote this as like, this is just a normal romance it, because it's not it's not and I when I like first started reading it okay it has 49 episodes right now how girl how when I first started reading this um I think chapter six is where you see like that sort of assault depiction like again it's nothing graphic because god forbid you show any sort of like consensual graphicness but when it's really like non-graphic any sort of alluding to non-consensual assault it's fine whatever webtoon doesn't care um when i first started reading that around like chapter six or whatever that's when all of the comments were like what? they were shook i was shook um and I was like, I'm rating this. I'm going to rate this because that's really all you can do. And there were people like in the comments being like, how do you report something like this? Like, what the hell? Um, and there's really not a super great way to do that. Like, Webtoon isn't really going out of their way to do any sort of quality control in that regard. So you can rate it. And so I rated it as low as one can rate something. And the rating was like four, four point something out of 10. Like catch, catch a hint, right? And I just checked last night and it's back at like 5.09 rating. Because now magically it's fine now that there's consent. People just forgot. They forgot about the first 10 chapters of the story and now everything's fine. I don't know. I think this story is kind of a good example of like how popular very like what the F stories have kind of become in a public space. Like if you think about like popular book talk books in the dark romance sphere where it's like what the actual shit am I reading? There is something to be said about stories like that, um, which would be an entirely different video and topic. And I know that there are other people who have made far better like deep dives into that sort of topic. I don't know if I feel like well enough equipped to talk about that sort of thing. There is something to be said about like people do enjoy that sort of thing because it allows them to explore those kinks in a, in a safe, contained way. That all being said, I think this story is a good example of, like, what is a very, like, public webcomic platform doing, not showing the proper disclosures on things, and just letting people raw dog stories without knowing what they're getting into as well as 
I'm so tired. This is purely a subjective thing, but I'm so tired of seeing stories that are so incredibly toxic in a this is completely normal type of way. Some people like that shit. I'm not really sure if there's even a moral to this video. This is this is my corner to rant about things and I just I just needed to get that off my chest. I do feel a little better. This was a little cathartic. I wish webtoon would do better. Um I don't really see that happening, but that's all I've got for you. Next video um, I have will probably be a review on a book that I actually do enjoy. I want to get that out soon for Summerween. That all being said, if you do have web comics that you do enjoy on Webtoon, I would love to hear it. I frankly feel like I'm so web tuned out when it comes to romance on that side i'm i'm sick of it i'm i'm done feeling bamboozled i'm done reading about boring female characters and and really crappy male characters i'm tired so if you have any recommendations i'm all ears frankly maybe something that's not romance because this ain't it that's all I got. Bye, Mom.